welcome to Make Change Fun and Easy with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. This is the podcast to help change makers, coaches, trainers, and healers break your chains of fear so you can create the impact and income you desire with fun and ease. Please make sure you subscribe to enjoy every episode. This podcast is sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Hello, Salam, Shalom, Namaste, Sasrikal, Aloha, Hola, Ciao, Bonjour, Buna, Privyet, and Mabuhe. It's really, really good to be with you again. And I'm so happy, like extra happy today because we have an extra special guest, a returning guest, one of my favorite guests. And um, it is Bola Adam Bola. So happy to have you back, Bola. And before I forget to tell our audience, Bola is a life coach and author. Ah, that's so cool. So welcome again, Bola. Thank you, Samia. It's really nice to see you. Thank you for having me again. It's always a pleasure. Your energy is absolutely amazing. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. No, thank you for coming back. I always have such a fabulous time talking with you. There's there's a sense of depth and spiritual um, wisdom, you know, that you bring with you that I really, really appreciate our conversations. I learned so much. So, oh my gosh, actually, first of all, before we dig into our topic for today, please tell us more about who you are and what you do. Thank you, Samia. I love your wisdom as well. It's so, you know, it, in, it's so, in, it inspires me and the, your, your approach and the way you relate um, really calms the spirit. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, I am a life coach and an author, an author of a book. My book just got published on Barbara, Daily Soul Bites, Daily Soul Bites for an Inspired Life. Uh, and it just got it just got published on Barbara Press, a division of Hay House, uh, about three weeks ago. And um, it's, um, yeah, so yes, and then I'm also uh, um, an energy healer. I'm a Reiki energy healer and a Kashic record um, reader. And um, I'm also an emotional freedom coach. So I work with my clients to help them master their emotions. Because I really believe that emotions are one of the key things that stop us from living the life of our best outcomes. Mm -hmm. So being free of the limits that we have and having a lot of self-awareness um, around the emotions that we have and being able to align to those those parts of us that really help us to um, make the best decisions. Those are the things that really make a difference in our day to day. So that's that's who I am and what I do. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah, all of the work that you do is so so important and helps me change more fun and easy so <laughs> you're in the right place and um, yeah tell me more about your new book daily soul bites what is it about thank you samia daily soul bites is a book i wrote in 2020 um because i was going through a really tough time and um I began to realize even deeper, even though I've been on this journey, this transformation journey since I was in my teens, I realized that I really needed to connect more with the higher self perspectives because I believe that we do have these two selves. We are energy beings and we have this physical ego self and the higher self. And my book talks about the different perspectives, the perspectives of the physical ego self, which is usually around 
our feelings, our emotions, the density, the anger, the competition, and then the perspectives of the higher self, which is usually around unconditional love. And there are 31 chapters in the book talking about different topics. So there's joy, there's love, there's empathy, um, there is compassion. And these chapters are given different perspectives, perspectives of the higher self and perspectives of the lower self. So that when we read it, when anyone who reads the book and really connects with it, will become more familiar with the perspectives of both selves. And then we can really come to a learn if we choose, because it's a choice. It's a choice. We can choose to align to the higher self, to love, mm. to a conditional love. Because this is where infinite wisdom and infinite intelligence lies. Mm. And I was really guided to write this book. And, you know, the goal is to enable people to, those who read and connect with it, to develop a deeper sense of awareness of the perspectives of the higher self so that we can align, because familiarity allows us to align to things. So we can align to it and then really come to that um, a deeper, a deeper understanding of unconditional love. Decisions we can make can be based more around unconditional love. So that's, um, yes, and it's about self-acceptance. Self-acceptance, because the physical ego self is part of us and we have to to accept both the physical ego self as well as the higher self. Mm -hmm. So I talk about the value of the physical ego self, but how the higher self is really what should drive that physical ego self. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, uh, it, you know, it's something that is very dear to my heart. <laughs> yes. Ah. Yes, my gosh. As always, Laura, you bring up so many amazing <laughs> from some wisdom. Oh my gosh. Where to start digging into what you've just been sharing? Uh, um, well, you know, one of the things that I love to do with our audience is share little bits of my life experience. And that way, you know, we can hopefully uh, explain or in the context of an actual life situation, some of these concepts. And so as you are talking about the idea of choice, you know, uh, immediately I have uh, had memories triggered of actually things that have been going on in my life. And um, wow, it's, it's really... It's really amazing once you realize it really is a choice because, you know, okay, so what am I talking about? So, you know, I'm a Muslim uh, by choice. You know, I, I, I like to make that clear. Like I practice the religion and faith and spirituality of Islam by choice. I mean, I was born in a Muslim family, my whole family, uh, we consider ourselves Muslim, but, you know, um, at a certain point, I was like in my teens, when I made a conscious choice that I wanted to practice the faith tradition, the spiritual and religious tradition. And so I feel, you know, ever since I made that choice, um, I, I, it spurred a lot of growth for me, you know, and again and again, you know, I find myself facing situations in life where, you know, I have to choose. Am I going to act in a way that, you know, my brain and my feelings are driving me towards, or am I going to act in a way that my spiritual faith um, guides me towards and most recently for example we had this situation where one of my uncles actually passed away and um, you know we've lost so many people actually friends and family over the 
three years of COVID and ongoing. And one of my uncles passed away. And then I found out that he had made me his trustee. Um, mm. And I didn't know that he had done that. But, um, you know, it's like, okay, that's one thing. But, you know, with that comes various responsibilities and including so that the trust that I'm responsible for has some beneficiaries, right? I mean, that's the way trusts work. So the, the issue that came up was that one of the beneficiaries that has been named in the trust is someone that my uncle loved very, very much, very, very deeply, and um, certainly considered this person as a part of his family. But other members of my family uh, don't see this person in that light. They do not consider this person as a part of our family. And um, one of the um, feedbacks or pushbacks that I have been receiving from my some members of my family in the context of these duties that I've taken on um, as a trustee of my uncle's trust is they say, you know, this, this person who's not a member of our family you should just make arrangements, uh, give them what, what they're due is, and then just let them go. You know, just do what they want with themselves of their own accord. And you should free yourself of the responsibility of being responsible in any way for this person who's not part of our family. Because the thinking is, you know, yeah, of course family we love our family we do all kinds of things for our family but if someone is not family then they get treated differently and um that is i mean that is a perspective that is held by i think the majority of people in the world but mm-hmm. that is not the perspective that my faith uh as my spiritual tradition teaches me not at all because uh you know my faith teaches me that we are all brothers and sisters uh you know in the sense that um we are all children of the same divine essence divine spirit and we are all interconnected we are all interdependent and my faith my spirituality calls me to love all people equally as much as humanly possible yeah you know and so when in in this kind of situation it's like on the one hand would it make my life less complicated to be like okay yeah i'm just going to push this person out of my life and not take responsibility but on the other hand um you know if i listen to the guidance that my faith my spirituality provides well what comes with that um you know what are the benefits that come along with that am i do i have that awareness and do i have the commitment um ultimately um you know to my faith and spirituality to make the choice to choose love, to choose unconditional love, to choose, you know, um, to be in relationships with people beyond um, just the, the standards of society in terms of what's due to those we have, like a blood relationship, that does it work. Hmm. Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode. Hope you're getting value out of it. For your information, this episode has been sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Are you a change maker, coach, trainer, or healer? Are chains of fear holding you back from making the impact and income you desire? Using a unique combination of positive psychology and the spiritual wisdom 
of our most effective change makers, the Happiness 101 program helps you break through your limiting beliefs and manifest the abundance and success you desire with fun and ease. Interested? Book a free Happiness 101 exploration call with me, your happiness expert, Samia Vano. Just use my online calendar link in the show notes. Now back to the show. I, I, I can see the dilemma, but I believe that within you, you already know. You already know what feels right because we are all infinite pieces. We are unique pieces of infinite intelligence, each of us. And what may be right for me may not be right for you. Each each of us, when we take a pause, when I have a dis- difficult decision to make, because family can be very intimidating, um, especially if they're close. If they're distant, it's it's not too bad. <laughs> but if you're close, you always have to consider what their preferences are. But it does depend on us. You know, we're adults. You know, and I think when we're adults, we sometimes have to make difficult decisions. And I always take a breath. When I have to make a difficult decision, I always pause. Mm. I take time away and I take a breath. If whatever I have to do to go into that silent space, because that stillness within us, this is where infinite intelligence mm. lies. This is where the higher self lies. The higher self is not um, noisy. You know, it's 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 there's a quiet calm that quiet, calm space within us. That's where I go when I have to make a decision. And it's always um, something that we have to stand by because what you decide may be something that nobody else agrees with. But we have to remember that we are creating our own reality. The perspectives that your your family will hold will depend on the perspective that you hold because the boundaries that we set is what others will have to follow really we are empowered beings and there's always um i always say you're either coming into this world as a victim or as an empowered being (laughs) and we always have to decide almost sometimes on a minute by minute basis whether we're going to be a victim or whether we're going to be an empowered being. And it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. But it's something that brings us a lot of peace over time as we develop resilience and self-awareness. I, you know, I am a, you know, I'm a single parent. I've got my two boys. They're in their 20s now, late 20s. And nobody always, you know, not everybody agrees with everything I do, you know. I remember when I went into politics, my mother tried her best to get me out. And um, it was only when I decided that I'd had enough of it that I, that I decided to leave, you know. But it was tough. It was tough to stand my ground. But I needed to explore it. I needed to explore my passions. I needed to explore this particular area that I was very, um, I was quite determined about it. And sometimes we have to accept our own physical ego desires and passions Mm. until we get to a place where we feel that there is something else that is much more important because that that ego mm-hmm. self is the is you know that's the self that's holding on all the different perspectives as far as the higher self is concerned the higher self needs nothing wants nothing the higher self is very content very very content 
with absolutely everything that is going on. And you can go one way or the other. There is always um, an acceptance within us that the higher self holds. But the physical ego self has a gazillion perspectives, a gazillion ways that it wants to go. But at any point in time, we have to find our center. We have to know that, am I feeling peace with this physical ego perspective? And if we're not, we can come back into that higher self, mm. into that place of calm. But it's okay to explore. It's okay to have desires. It's okay to have passions. But if we're not feeling peace, if we're feeling the struggle, if we're feeling a lot of chaos around us, we know we can pause and we're not victims. We can remember that we are empowered beings. So the answers are always within us. Yes. Uh... Yeah, and it comes back to the idea of choice that, and, and being clear about what your priorities are in terms of what you really want to experience mm -hmm. and feel in life. Um, because when we are making our choices, I think for most people, the the priority is not peace and happiness um uh, i mean the, in the dominant culture and the dominant mindset we push aside you know i mean we have each and every one of us have a deep need for peace and a deep need to experience and be happy but the way that society generally teaches us to be, these things are pushed aside. They're not prioritized. And okay. so the way that then we make our choices, um, the choices that we do make, they're not always the choices that lead us back to peace, that lead us to experience more happiness in our lives. Um, and it's so important to realize that this is a choice that we're making. You know? Yes. Yeah. To follow, to follow the the you know that majority um, inclination, it is a choice. It is our own choice yeah. to do that. Um, yeah. And and yeah. it's you know it's not easy standing alone. It's not easy standing alone, but then we come to realize that we. It, it's, it is down to us as adults. It is really down to us. Um, and when we think we are alone, we are not. We're actually mm. spirit beings. We're actually spirit beings. And we do not have to follow the majority. Yes. yes we do because, not. Yeah. You, you're so right. Because alone in itself is a perspective. That when you think, when you feel alone, that's a perspective that you're holding. And that in itself is actually a choice. Like you don't have to hold that perspective of being alone. Uh, because again, it's like the ego self can very easily fall into that perspective of I'm alone. But... Oh, yeah when you look at life from the perspective of the higher self like you were saying Bola, you're never alone yes yes we have so many guides going back going back and ancestral guides because i believe in lifetimes mm -hmm. i believe that we you know we we don't just have one lifetime. um so we have a lot of ancestors i believe that are guided us at that spirit level and we are multi-dimensional beings we are much more powerful than we realize it, i read about this for so many years before i really embodied it 
was only when I did my Reiki energy healing in 2018 that I was attuned to Reiki energy, that I felt that energy within me. Mm. It's a very powerful energy. This is our higher self. This is our true spirit self. And my Reiki teacher said to me, this energy you feel within you is your true self. This body is not you. The mind is not you. This energy you feel within you is your true self. And this true self is called so many names in different cultures. In the Christian religion, I'm more into spirituality now than religion. In the Christian religion, it's called the Holy Spirit. It's called Prana in the East. It's called Chi in a number of different cultures. That energy is called so many different names. Every single culture in the world understands that energy. This is who we truly are. And when we begin to connect with this energy, we will be guided. We will be guided on the little things of life, where to park, what to eat, what phone to buy, which country to live, on the very little things and the big things as well, the mm -hmm. biggest thing of all. Yeah. Every single thing, we can be guided on it. It took me a long time to trust it because it's one thing to feel that emotion, to feel that energy. It's another thing to come to trust it. And it's baby steps mm -hmm. to begin to listen to that voice through stillness. This is part of what I teach in my Smeet Emotional Mastery program. I teach my clients to really come to understand that higher self, to come to trust it, to come to listen to it, come to live, to live their day to day as that higher self. Mm. It is not just something that is read in books. This is real life. It is possible to live our lives. And a lot of times, I remember reading a book when I was 18 by Ramana Maharashi. Because my mother was a librarian and we had books at home. And I saw the book on the shelf by Ramana Maharashi. I did not know who he was at the time. Um, the book was titled, Who Am I? And he talked about the higher self and the physical ego self. This is as far back as I learned about this, but I did not really experience it yes. until about five, six years ago. And then when I experienced it, to begin to trust it and to allow it to guide me on the little things with confidence, because that confidence has to grow in the little things and then in the big things. And we have to remind ourselves, I was saying to you before we came online, that I did a 20 minute meditation before I joined you. I meditate two, three times a day, especially on a busy day. Even if it's for five minutes, I just set time aside to connect because it heals us as well. Mm. That energy is flowing through us. And when we connect to it, it allows us to release the tensions. It allows us to release the doubts. And then the emotions that we have within us are less dense. You know, we can release the anger. We can release the fears. Mm. This, is, um, this is why this book is so important to me. Because... The more we can begin to align to that higher self, the more we can really begin to live the life that we were meant to live. Mm. It is not just um, literary stuff or literature. Um, it's really quite, um, it's life-changing, life-saving. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. You know, in my own um, spiritual journey, uh, I 
have been through different stages, of course. And, uh, you know, there came a point where um, I wanted to just be so focused and so um, just in the awareness of my higher self. Because, you know, when you are, there is that and peace and calm and stillness and mm. I was like you know I have had enough chaos enough suffering enough um, of all this turmoil uh, in my life and I didn't want it anymore and yeah. so I was like you know I, I just want to be in the stillness and the calm and the peace um, And that is like for me, even now, sometimes, you know, such an attractive idea. But what I have learned is that um, the higher self, I mean, certainly in the context of our life in this world, uh, you know, you, 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 ex you, you experience that you cannot disconnect your ego self, your your body from your spirit and from your higher self. You cannot. This, no, this, no, you that, cannot. The, right. the, the physical ego self is always there. Yes, it it's is, always it'll there. always be there. And um, so it's uh, so it's then really about okay, how do I continue to experience and connect more and more deeply in my awareness with that peace and calm of my higher self even as i remain yeah. in the body right and so that is when i realize that all of these choices that we have to make whether it's about little things or big things it's like yeah. uh, you know that's where the, the, that that comes in where you find that um, you, you know like a, a little choice okay it's like what am I going to eat right now or which uh, road am I going to take to drive to my office today or, you know things like yeah, that true. that on true. one hand um, it's like what does it matter uh, but on the other hand um, you know, there may be an optimal choice in that context, optimal sure. from the perspective of uh, your higher self has something to say about it. True, true, right? true. Yeah, so tell me more about this this connection between our higher self and the ego self and the value of the ego self uh, and the higher self and the connection between them it's like what's the point of I mean like for me I was like okay yes when I really prioritized and really desired the peace and the calm and the stillness I was like okay I get it uh, being the consciousness of my higher self just align myself with my higher self that that is what it gives me um I got that point, but then, you know, it was like, I was devaluing my physical self, my ego self, and putting it down. And, um, you know, so anyway, I would just love to learn more from you about, you know, this, because that's so much of what your book is doing too. It's like trying to help people see the connection yes. and the different perspectives yeah. of both ourselves. So tell me more about this connection. Thank you, Samia. I I know that, you know, Earth, this planet Earth is really about that duality. It separates us. We have come here to forget who we truly are. Mm. So the physical ego self and the higher self is a constant. This is the way planet earth has been set up and at some point i say to myself that 
I must have thought this was going to be exciting before I came here. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, before I was born into this lifetime, <laughs> I must have thought it would be really nice to be to forget how powerful I am. It would be really nice to forget that I am spirit being. It would be really nice to to have to rediscover myself. I must have thought it would be exciting. And um, there are times when I say to myself that I'm definitely not coming back to this planet Earth. <laughs> it is it is not something that I I I could I can't imagine how I thought it was going to be exciting to to forget who I am and to have to struggle to have to struggle with this physical ego that is so dominant, so strong. But this is the this is the nature of the planet and that's the first thing i think we need to remember that this is the setup of planet of mother gaia planet itself the matrix this is this is from what i have read um the matrix is really set up for us to forget who we truly are so once we know that this is the system on a moment by moment basis, we are remembering who we are. Mm. And it's a choice. And it's really as simple as that. And this is what enlightenment is align into light, align into light, align into the higher self. And it becomes easier as we come to trust it. But we cannot let go of the physical ego self because that physical ego self is all the different personalities. I still have to run my business. I still have to be a mother. I still have to cook. I cannot stay in stillness all day doing absolutely nothing but being in meditation which is really sweet it's a really sweet my sweetest moments i tell you samia uh, when i'm in meditation it wasn't always like that my sweetest moments used to be on the dancing floor <laughs> or partying with my girlfriends you know but i would realize that you know it, there were so many other aspects of my life that were falling apart because I was not attending to them with light. Mm. There was so much anger and, you know, I can dance for 10, you know, for, you know, 10 minutes, but I'm coming back home to chaos or I'm coming back to my business. And, um, you know, there is, I'm dealing with contractors who are, who I cannot trust. There are certain aspects of our lives that higher self really begins to work through. And we find ourselves having more ease in different aspects of our lives because we're allowing that higher self to penetrate all the different aspects. So we just find ourselves having more ease and flow in the different aspects mm. because we are now operating as our true self, as that empowered being and not as victims. The ego self is a victim. That is the mentality of the ego is a victim and is a conditioning. That's the conditioning of this planet. It's never going to change. If we are expecting somewhere along the line that one day somebody will help us to feel more empowered, to feel more love, or if we're looking to be fully loved outside of our own self, if we're looking for that unconditional love outside of our own self, we will probably have to do many lifetimes to find it. <laughs> you know, so it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's an understanding that this is the way the planet is. This is the way the existence is. And it can be fun, but it depends on what we are aligning to. It depends on what we are aligning to. And sometimes those decisions have to be, the alignment decisions have to be made moment by moment. And it takes a familiarity. 
are learning to love. If somebody does something that really annoys me, because anger is, doesn't mean you will not get angry anymore, but we will do, we will respond to it in an health, in a healthy way. I will pause and think of the reasons why I'm angry as opposed to curse and rage at them and actually destroy that relationship. You know, because emotional freedom, which is something I also teach, is that freedom of expression of our emotions, of our range of emotions, without fear, guilt, shame, or regret, in a in a in a healthy way, for our best outcomes. We will still have we will still have regret, but we will be able to rise above it in an easier way. And this is this is why, you know, I I do not know if I can live any other way anymore. Mm. I don't think I can I can honor. I I have seen to even now I the 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 guidance I get on a daily basis, moment by moment, is um, is is something that I'm just so grateful and thankful for. But I know that I am the one that is enabling myself to receive it, to receive it. Mm. And it takes love. Yeah. We have to be kind to ourselves. It takes compassion. Mm. It takes self-worth. We have to be ready for an easier life. We have to say to ourselves, yes, I have been experiencing peace and calm, and I want to continue to experience more of that i will continue to align to the higher self perspectives yes i've done it for two weeks and i will continue to do it for another two weeks another two years i will continue and it gets yeah. easier and easier but it's a choice yeah. and it sometimes takes a lot of compassion self-care little little steps breathing sleeping Drinking water, hydrating ourselves, surrounding ourselves with those who care about us. We know those who we know who those people are. We know those who don't care about us. We may go after them thinking they will change, but we know who cares about us and who doesn't. And we can begin to surround ourselves with more people that care about us. Yeah. And it's those little, little steps that really help us to begin to feel a lot more compassion for ourselves. And then we can begin to align to, um, to those higher, it becomes easier to align to our higher self perspectives. But it's a moment by moment choice. And then it becomes a monthly by monthly choice. And then a yearly by yearly choice. But alignment to light is enlightenment. Mm. And then we evolve more and more away from the dominant control of that physical ego self. Because mm. most of the time we are being controlled by that anger, by the fear. That will always be there. It will never go away. I can tell you that. If I do not meditate for three days... I'm back in the in my physical ego self. Quick, it's very very powerful. It's very very powerful. This is why I love, you know, the, the you know those who who practice um, that spiritual practice. It, it's it's not something that we we do just willy nilly, just because it feels, you know, we have nothing else to do. No. <laughs> It's because we know what we're dealing with. We have to know, we really have to realize what we're dealing with here. Mm -hmm. It's a very dense, um, um, quite uncompromising. It's, it's um, if, we, if, we, if we realize the degree of, if we actually realize the degree of, um, the degree of um, power and dominance that physical ego self had, we wouldn't mess around with it. 
we wouldn't. We would be even more determined to stay in the higher self, mm -hmm. to align to it. And it's about self-awareness. When I begin to sense myself being dragged down, by the time one thing goes off, another thing goes off, the third thing goes off, and I'm picking it up and I'm not doing anything to align to light, I know I'm asking for trouble. <laughs> I'm hoping that ex that ex answers yeah. what, you know that that yeah. question the difference the difference between the the duality mm. it it only becomes easier as our self awareness and compassion grows um, and understanding the perspectives becoming more familiar with them and it's all around love yeah. it's all around love yeah but well, we. You, you will have to come back so we can keep talking about this because I the only reason I am going to have a stop now is because I know you have to go <laughs> you have another appointment to honor and I don't want to make you late for that so to all of our listeners please uh, go check out the previous episodes that we have done with Bola, where we focus more on the emotional intelligence and the emotional freedom uh, aspect of the teachings that Bola does. And uh, very soon, I hope we will have Bola back and we'll continue this conversation <laughs> about daily soul bites. And until then, make sure you check the show notes so that uh, you can follow those links that I post in there so you can connect with Bola and learn even more. So until we connect next time, I wish you lots and lots of peace and joy.